What you're seeing is a computer simulation of a comet hitting the Earth's ocean. Now, for the first time, scientists have computational tools that help them predict what can happen if such an astronomical event does occur. Expanding the horizons of research and tackling science of scale require more computational power than any one machine can provide. That's why supercomputers at various Department of Energy sites around the country are being linked up so that they can all work simultaneously on the same calculation. Distributed computing allows supercomputers like the Paragon XPS 150 and XPS 35 at the Oak Ridge National Lab in Tennessee to link up with the Intel Paragon at Sandia National Lab in New Mexico and the Cray T3E at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. Researchers can then have the power of four massively parallel supercomputers running calculations at the same time to help unlock some of the mysteries of our world. This computer simulation of how the magnetic spins of individual atoms combine to make metallic alloys, either magnetic or not, is one example of the need for the power of distributed computing. And for some of the very large simulations, that's what we have done, uh, linking the Paragon at uh, Oak Ridge with the uh, similar machine in Sandia. We actually also coupled it to one of the Cray T3 uh, E machines at uh, Pittsburgh. And so using uh, modern networking, uh, we've been able to link several different massively parallel computers in order to be able to do a simulation of a system size of, uh, of getting up to 3,000 atoms. So what is a distributed computing environment? It's a combination of supercomputers, scheduling, program development, resource management, storage, visualization, and human expertise that fit seamlessly together, all running in tandem because of the network that ESNet provides. But distributed computing is more than just running calculations that require quadrillions of mathematical floating point operations. It allows scientists at different locations around the country to check in to work on and observe the same projects at the same time. The Cumulus software that's been developed for distributed computing allows collaborating teams to explore what-if scenarios that are impossible with physical experiments. The simulation of a comet hitting the ocean is an example of a CTH shockwave physics application that can run on cumulus. And as the impact occurs and evolves, you see a very large splash of water, you see ejecta coming out of the crater, and then a, uh, the beginnings, this is very early in the, in the event, but the beginnings of something like a tidal wave or a tsunami. And you would see that the uh, height of a possible tidal wave might be on the order of hundreds of meters, um, high enough to, if it uh, traversed the ocean, to completely inundate Florida. And the collaborative environment that distributed computing and ESNet allow facilitates discussions like this one between staff at the Oak Ridge National Lab and Sandia National Lab. We're planning on trying to put a machine on the floor with an ATM connection uh, that can do that, some type of infinite reality system uh, on the floor there that will be able to demonstrate that. The electronic notebook research being done at Oak Ridge National Laboratory helps ESNet and distributed computing accelerate the progress of science and research. With inputs similar to a paper notebook, an electronic notebook allows a collaborating group of scientists to share ideas, observations, and research results from their distributed computing experiments. In addition to notes and text, scientists across the country can instantly contribute and share electronic images, tables, and graphs in secure electronic notebooks. So what does the future hold for distributed computing? Ken Cleaver from Oak Ridge and David Greenberg from Sandia answer that one. Well, so distributed computing is, is where we're going. Everybody's going to be going there and it's going to be the ability for people to get as much computing they need when they need it.
I think there are two avenues that are going to be of particular importance. One is the sort of seamless environment that we're creating here with our colleagues from Sandia, where we're hooking giant machines together to achieve a level of computing capability which at any given time will always be the highest level that can be achieved, simply by definition. Another form of distributed computing which is really becoming extraordinarily interesting at this point is to take large numbers of the processors, link all of these together with high-speed networks. But a key to everything that I have said is expanded network capability. That is really the central element in all of this. Distributed computing, a combination of scientists and computers working together no matter the location. It's another facet of the Energy Sciences Network, which continues to connect researchers, information, and resources by technologically overcoming geographical barriers. ESNet, tomorrow's network, accelerating the pace of today's science.